Okay, the Camino is not really about food, but there is some really nice food along most of the Camino routes. I'm going to share some of the places that I've enjoyed this week, coming right up. Okay, so I know walking the Camino is not supposed to be, you know, a gastronomic experience necessarily. Uh, certainly for me, it's a, it's a very physical and emotional and spiritual journey. But nevertheless, there's some very nice food to be had as well. So let me share with you some of the uh, places that I have enjoyed eating and, and when Pat, my wife, has been with me, uh, that she has enjoyed eating. Um, and this is a combination of places that we've tried uh, from three times along the Camino Francis. Um, so I've got a variety of places and uh, let me just give a couple of um, riders right up front. First of all, please do not think I'm a food snob. Uh, I enjoy food. Uh, but I recognize that the price you pay for the food very rarely has any bearing on the quality of the food. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you some places which are very, very reasonably priced, uh, as well as some quite expensive ones. Um, my view, I think, is when you're paying a lot more for food, very often you're paying for the environment, the ambiance, um, maybe for you know a bit more of a fancy menu. Uh, but as you'll see as we go through this, I've had some fantastic meals which were very, very inexpensive. So Pat and I both enjoy eating. I'm very lucky to be married to a trained cook, chef. Um, so I'm very spoilt at home. And when we're traveling, we love to hunt out really nice food. So I'm going to share a variety. Let's get right on with it. So uh, I'll be talking to you here as well as on my PC screen. Um, and the route that we're talking about is the Camino Francis, because that's the one that we know best. It's the only one that we've walked so far. Uh, and I'm going to highlight a few places along the way um, to suit all pockets and purses. Uh, but these are places that we really enjoyed. So I'm basically going to, I've set all this up on the computer for you. Uh, we're going to have a look at where the places are. Uh, and what they're like. So kicking right off. So this is the Camino Francis from Saint-Jean. Um, I've had some nice meals in Saint-Jean. Um, nothing fantastic. And let me just preface again this whole video by saying I've probably only ever had two bad meals walking a Camino. The food is generally pretty good, not bad quality. Occasionally, you get a really nice meal. And those are the ones that I'm going to share with you this time, so that if you want to, you can check them out as well. But generally, the food's pretty good. Uh, have I had a, a meal in Saint-Jean that you know was worth writing home about? Oh, nice, but nothing fantastic. So <clears throat> the first one I will mention is in Roncesvalles. So if you haven't walked the Camino Francis yet, um, either day one or day two, you'll be coming down off the Pyrenees into Roncesvalles. Let's just zoom into the map here because uh, I'm going to show you exactly where these places are and I'm going to put links down below the video as well. So don't worry too much about the detail of the video. If you kind of spot a place and you think, oh, we might try that, all the links will be down below. So this is the little complex in Roncesvalles. We've got the albergue up the top here. There's a, a very old building, the Hotel Roncesvalles as well. Um, there's a place down here. There's a bar. The one that I've been in a couple of times, I, I've eaten in the hotel there and I've eaten in Casa Sabina a couple of times. I really like Casa Sabina. So let's just jump over here. And nope. <laughs> I knew what this was going to happen. I've got the uh, the things set up wrong. So Casa Sabina, let me just show you the right photos, is here, uh, right next to you know the main complex of the albergue. Um, now the first time I went to Casa Sabina, um, I walked into the bar and I had a little snack in the bar. I didn't know there was a dining room. <laughs> so as you walk into the bar. And, and there's a few tables on your right where you can have snacks. On the left, through the glass doors, is where the magic happens. That's the dining room. And in there, if you're there sort of around lunchtime, you can get a menu del dia, which is really, really nice. Um, the menu del dia, if you haven't seen my previous video, I'll put a link down below. Uh, on that one, I talked about the different types of menus. You get the 
Pilgrim's Menu, the Menu del Dia, all that kind of stuff. The Menu del Dia, um, probably these days is 12 to 14 euros, three courses, wine, uh, and it's generally a very good quality meal. In Casa Sabina, Pat and I had a wonderful lunch, really, really nice. So um, here's some pictures here from Casa Sabina, just sort of showing the food. Um, very, very nice. Generally, the um, menu del dia is two or three euros more expensive than a pilgrim's menu, but like double the quality or so. So Casa Sabina, there it is in Roncesvalles, really nice place to eat. Uh, where's next? Okay, so once we leave Roncesvalles, we're going down through uh, Biscaretta. Uh, Zubiri is the next stop. Um, so, so this was, you know, a wonderful three-course lunch for about 14 euros. If you go onto their website, um, they actually have... Have I got it here? No. Let me just show you their website. I'm sure they've got it here. Um, oh, I should have brought it up. But if you go onto the Casa Sabina website, they've actually got their menu and the prices. I think it's about 14 euros. So Zubiri is the next one. Um, and you've come down the steep slope into Zabiri, you've come across the bridge there, what is it, the Rabies Bridge or whatever. Um, now I've eaten a couple of times in Café del Camino, right here on the corner. You can't miss it, you come in over the bridge, down the little street here, up to this main street, and the Café del Camino is right on the left here. Um, it, it's a fairly um, unpretentious looking place, let's see if we can find a picture of the outside of it. There it is. Uh, that's the outside of it there, just on the corner. That's looking back over the bridge from where you've just come over. Um, but really nice food. It's packed with pilgrims. Um, it's probably the one, one of the most popular places in uh, Zubiri to eat. Um, just a really nice selection. And in fact, I found they've got uh, a website here. Here is the, the cafe. We've got some better pictures there. Um, have we got a menu? I think we might have a menu here. Yep, there we go. We've got a menu in English. So we've got paellas, uh, we've got meatballs. Um, we've had, this was Pat's first taste of slow roast lamb. We got that in here. I don't see it on the menu here though. Um, but that was delicious. They've got tapas, sandwiches, pizzas, all sorts of things. Always very busy with pilgrims, um, but not that expensive. Um, I sort of hesitate recommending places and, and at different price points because, you know, we all have a different perspective of what's expensive. Uh, for people from Australia, we, we pay a lot for, for food, so they, this is all quite inexpensive for us. Um, but, you know, depending where you're from, that might be a different perspective. So, yeah, really interesting menu, great place, great vibe, always full of pilgrims. Um, so where do we go from there? Um, well, from there, generally, we head off to Pamplona. Um, before we talk about Pamplona, though, I should mention one time we treated ourselves and stayed at the Hotel Acaretta, which is just past Zubiri. Um, it's the hotel that features in the movie The Way, where Tom has the meal outside and they're talking about, um, you know, Basque Country and he meets the Canadian for the first time, that place. Um, really nice and really nice food. So, I mean, if you want to splurge a bit, um, and spoil yourself. Hotel Acaretta is very nice, and very nice food. But let's move on now to Pamplona. And here we go with the map of Pamplona. You come into Pamplona from the north. Um, generally, da, 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 through about here, I think. Uh, and then as you come into Pamplona, beautiful city. Uh, if you head down for the main square, the Plaza del Castillo, um, that's generally where we stay, and we sort of stay around the square. You'll find loads and loads of places to eat around this square, uh, and also I mean, everywhere. You can see you can see all these little knife and fork symbols on Google Maps. Um, this street down the back here, how do we pronounce that? Calle de Estafeta. Uh, that's a lot of tapas bars down there. Uh, Bar Gaucho is quite a well-known one, um, but I've we've had meals. All around the square here which were excellent. Um, the one I just want to point out to you is Cafe Arunya. Uh, and why do I want to point that out? Well it's a fairly well-known cafe. Um, it's a very popular one and it's known uh, for being a hangout of Hemingway, the author. 
And this is it. It's a lovely old building, very like the uh, Cafe Casino in Santiago, which I'll mention at the end. But <clears throat> wonderful setting, um, good food. Yeah, we, we've had some good food in there. Have a look through the photos there. I mean, they've got churros and things like that. Uh, but the Cafe Aruña is a fairly famous place in Pamplona. Um, and we had to try the slow roast lamb in there as well. <laughs> so that was pretty good. Uh, here's their website. Uh, let's have a look at the menu. So I know I set all these up, but um, yeah, you've got all the all the menus in here uh, and telling you what they've got. And I should have the prices as well, I think. Let's just come back to that one. Yeah, more on the Cafe Aruña. Just see if we can get that menu coming up. Let's just translate it to English. Uh, we've got the living room and terrace menu. Here we go. <clears throat> So I'll put all these links down below for you. Um, I'm not sure what picotting is. That's probably pinchos, I guess. Um, so lots of different pinchos. Uh, we've got salads, we've got fish, we've got meat. Uh, here's the slow roast lamb, 14 euros. That was very nice. I uh, can't remember what else we had in there. So Cafe Aruña, very good, but there are loads and loads of places in Pamplona. That's just one of the, the well-known ones. Okay, where do we go after Pamplona? So we're going up over Alto del Padon, uh, down through Utoga, and we're coming into, um, where are we coming into? Puente La Reina. <laughs> okay, um, in Puente La Reina, we stayed in one of the main streets here. As you come into Puente La Reina, I should point out, you will come along the Camino here, past the Jacu Hotel, down the main road, and what we're going to look for here is a bar. Did I save the bar? Ye nope. Is that the one? Yes, it is. How do you say that? Bar a lot? Not sure. But let's have a look at where it is. It is right in the middle of Puente de Reina. There it is. Bar Aloa. Right in the middle of Puente de Reina. Um, <clears throat> loads of places to eat. I'm, I'm just highlighting some that we've tried which were really nice. So we can see that we've got the Platos Combinados. Um, we had lunch in there. It was packed with locals, which is always a good sign. Uh, and we shared a table with a Spanish couple who were delightful uh, because we, we got our ordering a little bit wrong um, and we thought we were going to get something else. Uh, I get into trouble when I order something and I get it wrong because <laughs> Pat loves her food. Um, and, and this couple were, were great. They, they explained to the, the waiter that we really wanted something else and, and helped us out. But really nice uh, local restaurant. Uh, we can see the Platos Combinados there are generally about eight or nine euros by the looks of it. Really nice food, lovely soups, you know, a lot of the stuff that you will see all along the Camino. Really, really nice food. Oh, that looks like the um, sort of lentil type soups and things. Um, great spot. That's in Puente Lorena. Where do we come to after Puente Lorena? So that's the Bar Aloha. Aloha. Sounds Hawaiian, doesn't it? Um, we are now coming into Logroño. So I'm not going to sort of include every town as we're going through here because that would take forever. Uh, and to be honest, I really just wanted to sort of give a shout out to some of the meals that were particularly nice. You're going to find fairly nice meals all the way along, but I, I just wanted to share some that we particularly enjoyed. So as you come into Logroño, you are going to come across, I think it's this bridge, and you're going to see the tourist office. Uh, and then the main part of the town is down here. If you're staying in Logroño, you have got to try out what is generally known as the Tapas Street which is right in the middle of Logroño here, um, and it is the Calle de Laurel. All, this whole street is tapas bars. <laughs> so I'm not going to try and recommend one, um, but it was just a fantastic experience. Here's a couple of photos here of the tapas bars, really popular with the locals and the pilgrims. A um, lot of fun. You know, generally, uh, I think what the locals do is they'll, they'll, you know, have a glass of wine and some uh, tapas in one bar and then they go to the next bar. We, we actually found one bar that we liked so much. We, we had about four or five things in there. Um, this looks like it could have been this one, actually. Um, but lots and lots of lovely tapas. So 
Calle del Laurel in uh, or Laurel in Logroño. Very worthwhile. I missed that on <laughs> my first Camino. I shot straight through Logroño. Uh, I was heading for Navarrete, I think, next. So uh, I wouldn't miss Logroño next time. Where are we coming to now? Um, Santo Domingo de la Calzada, or is that Calzada? I'm never quite sure with Zs. Now, uh, I'm talking about the Parador. Paradors can be extremely expensive, and I'm, I feel the urge to uh, make an excuse here. Normally, when we are walking on a Camino, we are staying in very cheap hostels, Casa Rurales, um, if we stay in albergues, we, we like to get a private room because I snore. But what I'm saying is we generally stay in quite inexpensive accommodation. Three or four times during 40 days, we might spoil ourselves. And we did in Santo Domingo because we stayed in the Parador, which was not outlandishly expensive. I think it was 80 euros or something, which, you know, for a couple of people is not that bad. But... What is worth knowing about this particular Parador is the restaurant is fantastic. Now, this was somewhere else that I got into trouble. Why did I get into trouble? Um, because we uh, we got in there in the afternoon and we were wondering where to eat. And they had the menu board up in the Parador. And uh, we were looking at the menu board. And it was all in Spanish, logically. But as you can imagine, with quite a fancy menu, the Spanish wasn't that easy to understand. I really struggled trying to work out what was on the menu. And so I guess I sort of had a bit of loss of face and, and sort of said, mm, uh, let's go somewhere else. Um, and we went off to eat somewhere else and the dinner was awful. <laughs> so somebody was not happy. And we came back to uh, the Parador, uh, having already had something to eat. And uh, we thought, well, let's go into the dining room anyway and at least we'll have a bowl of soup or something to see what it's like. Hmm. We had the best mushroom soup I have ever tasted in my life. And looking around at what other people were eating, we were just sorry that we had already eaten. The, f the food looked fantastic. So I think I've managed to find the menu here. Yeah, so <clears throat> you can understand why my lack of Spanish, I struggled a bit with this menu. But look, it is not that expensive. Um, so we've got a, some sort of chorizo dish, uh, we've got a salad, I'm really struggling, that's asparagus obviously, um, I'm not sure what most of this is, that's a potato thing, that's a rice thing, that's fish, uh, I think that's pork chops, um, but yeah, next time I'm eating there. <laughs> It was fantastic quality food. So there you go. I, I wouldn't necessarily be staying in a Parador in Santiago. I think that's like 250 euros a night. Um, but out in the sticks, they're not, they, they can be uh, a reasonable price. So very, very good restaurant. Where do we go to next? We are going now to Bia Franca Montes de Oca. Oh, I'm terrible with this pronunciation. Um, so just to show you where this is that is we've come from Logroño through Santo Domingo through Belorado and this is just at the base of those hills where you go up which is the Montes de Oca uh, the hills that you go through and a lovely wooded walk all the way through to Burgos um, so on our last Camino we stayed at the base of that hill in the Hotel San Anton Abad this is a gem. <laughs> Why do I say it's a gem? Um, it's like a Parador at a little hotel price. Let me just see if I can get some pictures coming up. Um, lovely rooms. I forget what we pay for it, but it certainly was not Parador prices. They also have an albergue in the building. So this is the front of the building as you walk up. Beautiful old building. So there's an albergue and a hotel. Here's the, uh, the well, that's actually the uh, sort of cafeteria. Uh, what have we got here? Some more pickies. Oh, that's a fancy looking bedroom, isn't it? We didn't get that one. Um, here we go. Some more pictures internally. Beautiful building. Uh, and I think I've managed to find an internal thing here. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the coffee shop and the restaurant. So this wasn't uh, an a la carte restaurant. It was a pilgrim's menu. So it would have been 
you know, 11 euros or something like that. Here's the, the restaurant. Really nice. Really nice. I mean, very good food, you know, for 11 euros, three courses with, with wine. Um, and again, if you check out the link below for my video about um, examples of menus, I remember I've got the menu from this one on that video as well. So check that out. So a great place there, St. Anton Abad. Uh, now we're getting into Burgos. So let's just get this sequence going here. Um, I'm just trying to work out where we've come from. Logroño, uh, yeah, Santo Domingo, Belorado. We're now into Burgos. And look, any of the big cities have got lots and lots of places, good places to eat. But we were staying in a little hotel near the center of Burgos um, and we said to the staff there we would love to have some really nice slow roast lamb Spanish style and they said there is one place to go Hotel Azofra that is where all the locals go they say it's not as expensive um, as some of the others it's not sort of just for the tourist market the locals go there um, I have to say it was sensational so it's about it's about a kilometer west uh, it's actually on the way out of Burgos towards Hornios, so you know you're heading in the right direction. Um, what is really interesting about the Hotel Azofra, after we came out of it, having had our wonderful roast lamb, there's the Hotel Azofra there, straight opposite, there was an archway. And I said to Pat, <laughs> I recognize that. <laughs> if you're a fan of the movie, uh, directly opposite is where they filmed the Gypsy Party. Um, which takes place in Burgos. Absolutely, it is that location. You'll recognise it. So always fun to see um, locations. So let's have a look and see if we've got some pictures of the hotel as offer. This is the actual hotel bit. We didn't stay there. Um, but we have some photos here of the dining room. Very, very nice. You have to book, by the way. You do have to book. We got somebody in the hotel to ring up for us. Uh, that's the outside of the hotel as offer. Just looking to see if we've got some pictures of the dining room. Very nice dining room. Very fancy. Look at this. That's exactly what it looked like. Wasn't that expensive, you know, for, for a treat. Uh, this is the lamb coming out of the pizza ovens. Oh, <laughs> my mouth's watering remembering this. So really, really great experience. That's, um, that is very, that's the dining room that we were in. So if you want to try something special, you know, the really traditional slow roast lamb. It just comes, the roast lamb with a salad. That's all you need. Really, really nice. Okay, so where are we going to come to next? Oh, there's the Hotel Azofra um, website. So there we go. Lots. I'll put all these links down below again. Has it got prices on here? I'm not sure. Have we got the menu? Let's just have a look. Offers. Sorry, it's being a little bit slow. I think those are specials, orders, let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. Here's the menu. So we've got um, we've got the starters. We didn't have starters or anything. We'd, it, it wasn't exactly cheap, so we only had the lamb. Um, here we go. We had the lamb and some wine, a quarter of a lamb each, I think. Um, but, you know, if you want something special, it was really nice. So that's the Hotel Azofra in Burgos. Really good if you want to have a bit of a treat. Where have we got next? Uh, oh, this one is very special. So let me just put this in context again. We are now in Carrion. Carrion de los Condes. And let's just come. So we've come from Burgos. We've gone through uh, Hornia, Santana. Montanas, uh, da, 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 da. we're all the way over here to uh, through Fromista. Yeah, I'm trying to think of all the different towns. So we've jumped forward quite a bit. And then we're in Carry On. Now, this place, if you want to splurge, uh, it's a fantastic place to stay, not just eat. This is a converted monastery turned into a hotel, the Monasterio de San Zoyo. Apologies if that pronunciation is way off. Um, so it's a monastery with its own church, its own cloisters. I'll put a link down below to it. 
Um, again, it, you know, it was better than a Parador, um, but not as expensive. We stayed there one night, and because Pat was injured and needed a rest, we asked them, you know, could we stay another night? And they had one room left, and we grabbed it because it was such a wonderful place to stay. But the restaurant was really good too. So where is it? Here is Carry On. Here's the, the main uh, town of Carry On. As you come down the hill out of town, you go across the river, and it's on the way out of town on the left. So let's just have a look at some of the photos. These the cloisters, private cloisters for the hotel. Um, here's, this is actually out the back of the hotel. We went for a walk out there. I'm just going to see. This is the uh, cloister section. This is inside the church, private church. Uh, let's just see if they've got any photos of the dining room. Yeah, there's, this is the dining room, which is upstairs. Um, lovely atmosphere and really nice food. Let's see if there's any more pictures of the dining room. And I think we might have a website here. Yeah, here's the restaurant. <clears throat> so I'll put the links down below again. The San Zoia upstairs, lovely restaurant. Um, and I'm not sure that we've actually got a menu in there, but you know, it gives you an idea of really, really nice food. Um, let's just hit the menu and see if it gives us a menu. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Wasn't cheap, um, but very, very good quality. Um, so we've got pork and all sorts of things in there, different meats, pork chops. Yeah, I struggle with that in Spanish, to be honest, but um, the, me the menus were in English as well on the table. But very, very nice meal and a wonderful place to stay. Okay, so what's next? Ah, this is one of my favorites, and this one has a funny story to it. So uh, we've now come through Leon. Um, I'm not going to recommend anywhere in Leon. It's a big city, loads of places to eat. Um, you know, I'm really sort of focusing on, on the, the ones out um, in the smaller places. So as you come after Leon on your way to Astorga, a lovely little town is Hospital de Orbigo. And right after you cross over the river, there's a lovely bridge there on the left. As you come off the bridge is this place, Don Suero de Quillones. Not sure how you pronounce that. Um, it's classed as a hostel. It's, it's a little hotel. Uh, I've stayed there a couple of times. Um, I really like it for two reasons. One, it has a fantastic view. This is sitting on the terrace of the hotel. Now, the funny story. <clears throat> so Pat and I had walked across the bridge. And we got to this place, um, and I think Pat wanted to go in to use the bathroom or something. So she went up into the into the bar area, and I was stuffing around outside with the packs, trying to find the passports or something. And and, and Pat's can't speak a word of Spanish, so I said, "Oh, you know, come on, hurry up, hurry up! I'm going to go to the bathroom." I said, "You go on in, you know, go in. I'll be there in a minute." So she wanders into the bar, and the hotel owner there is behind the bar, and. Uh, I forget exactly what he said, but when I walked in, he was in stitches. <laughs> he was just laughing so much. Uh, and I said in my terrible Spanish, you know, uh, my name's Rob, we've got a booking and all that. So what, what are you laughing about? And he said, I asked her a name and she couldn't even <laughs> reply to that in Spanish. Uh, he, he wasn't being offensive. It was all in, you know, fun. And it was, it was hilarious. <laughs> he was like, she couldn't even tell me her name. But it, you know, a lovely place and a, a delightful hotelier. Um, the reason I wanted to show you this one is not just the view. So you get a fantastic view from the terrace. We had some uh, some nice ham, I think. I wanted to show you this. This is the best salad I have ever had <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> and we now make it at home. Uh, in fact, I've got a photo on my blog. I think the one I had was even better than that. Um, but... You know how it's very difficult to get vegetables and stuff like that when you're walking on the Camino? <laughs> this was fantastic and it tasted even better than it looks. So um, this place, the Don Suero de Quillones, uh, right on the left-hand side of the bridge as you come across into Hospital de Obigo, 
lovely little hostel um, wasn't that expensive I don't think uh, nice dining room good food the salad was to die for uh, I forget what else we had I was just mesmerized with the salad so really nice place to stay this is um, this would be a view from one of the rooms uh, and that's it as you walk across the bridge into Hospital de Obigo that's the place there that's the dining room that's the little terrace it's not, it's not a flash it's just a, a little hostel um, but you know probably the best location in the town with views and wonderful food so well worth stopping in there now where do we come next oh this is one of my favorites um, so where are we now we have oh got a this is on the way to Othebrero. So we have come through now. Let's just track back. Uh, we now come way ahead. We have come through Ponferrada, Molina Seca, uh, Bia Franco del Bieto. Just as an aside, um, we did stay in the um, Parador in Bia Franco del Bieto didn't like it it was quite a new building and the restaurant was nothing as good as the one in Santo Domingo so I wouldn't go there again so on the way out here up towards Othebrero we stayed at a very nice little Casa Rural called Casa Rural Maison Las Rocas uh, just on the left in the village and opposite they have a little bar so let's have a look on, on, a, on another video I talk about different accommodation types um, you know this they call themselves a casa rural um, it's probably more like an hostel which is like a little private hotel uh, they had about six or eight rooms I think these the rooms are in this place here on the left and opposite they have this little bar and a restaurant fantastic meal <laughs> uh, owned by the same couple this is the little restaurant we had a pilgrim's menu which probably cost 12 euros it tasted sensational it was fresh trout with uh, with chipped potatoes it was a lovely fresh salad everything was really fresh and this is going to sound corny um, but cooked with love <laughs> that's all you could say it was fresh ingredients so well cooked it was one of the best meals we had on our Camino um, and you know like I say just a pilgrim's menu for 12 euros something like that um, and again, you'll find that one on my blog. I'll put a link down below because I had to get a photo. I said, who's the chef? And oh, it's my wife. Just, you know, a couple in their late 30s. Uh, and they came out for a chat. Um, there isn't a picture of the owner there, I don't think. But um, wonderful, wonderful meal. I will definitely stay there again. Oh, look, here's the trout. You know, simple food cooked beautifully. You know, it was such a nice meal. So you don't have to pay a lot to get really nice food, do you? The next one we're going to look at is Othebrero. So the next day, um, <clears throat> and I have eaten here three or four times. So as we get up into the village of Othebrero, here's the church. As you walk out of the church, you'll, you'll recognize this building. Um, just on the right, it has a little gift shop. Unfortunately, they don't have a well, they have a website, but it's not a very good one. I'll show you that in a minute. But there's a little gift shop at the front um, and, and there's a bar next to it. Basically, if you go through the gift shop, you come into the restaurant at the back of the hotel. Really nice food. Um, I've eaten in a few places in Othebrero. Without a doubt, that's the best. Um, I could jump on here, but I don't think it's going to really show us very much I struggle to find any decent pictures this is it here on the right I think uh, so we've got our back towards the um, the church uh, you know they have this will be inside the restaurant the beautiful soups uh, we've had trout there which was delicious um, now unfortunately there's no photos of the restaurant but they do have a website I'll show you the website <laughs> that's it <laughs> Um, so basically as you come out of the church there's a kind of a little square it's the place on the right with the gift shop at the front there's another gift shop over there towards the left it's the one on the right the Hotel Othibero restaurants through the back great food 
and, and not expensive. Okay, so that is the Hotel Otterbrero. Uh, apologies, the, uh, the website doesn't have any great pictures or a menu, um, but I have details of it on my blog, so I'll put links down below. There's going to be lots and lots of links down there. Okay, where next? So what comes after Otterbrero? We're now into uh, Galicia. And this little place deserves a mention. Von Freer. Now, where on earth is Von Freer? It's after Othibrero. Let me just show you on the map. So we come out of Othibrero. We're heading down towards Tria Castella. Uh, and Von Freer is one of the sort of last villages you come to on that stretch before you start going downhill towards Tria Castella. And I had stopped here on my very first Camino for, you know, just a snack, I think, and a coffee. And it was a particularly cold day, and it's the last little cafe. And I think it's an al it, it, it's got accommodation. I'm not sure if it's an albergue or a sort of hostel. Um, but Casa Lucas, it's basically the last building on the left as you come out of the village. And uh, Pat and I went in there on our last Camino just to sort of warm up and get a coffee. Uh, so it's got, you know, a couple of tables outside. You go in here, it's got this lovely little bar with about three tables in it. There was a roaring fire. Uh, when we went in, the owner came in and put more wood on the fire and fired it all up. And we had just had a couple of really nice um, experiences with flan. <laughs> we don't really get flan in Australia. Uh, I know you get it in America. It's based in, in, If you're watching in the UK, it's like a cream caramel. Uh, and Pat had a thing for flan, so we're having a coffee, and she said, oh, I wonder if they've got some flan. So we asked, uh, and, and the young lady who was looking after us said, you know, I'll go and ask mum. <laughs> we felt very guilty, because mum had made flan for the guests for that evening, and she came back and said, it's it's not really hard yet. We said, we don't mind, we just love it. So we got some sort of semi-set flan, and I think we might have ruined the dessert for everybody else that evening. Um, but, oh, we had homemade soup, which was delicious, and this flan. Um, oh, if, if I was going through this area again, I would stay there. So, you know, this is just an example, again, of a very modest little place to stay. Homemade cooking. Absolutely delightful food. Here's, here's the little bar. This is taken from the front door. And I think there are some there's some accommodation out the back there. Um you know, who, oh, look at these soups, you know, wonderful homemade soups. I'm looking to see if they've got the flan. <laughs> this is the little bar. So there's a like a, a dining area up here. We just sat down here in front of the fire. It was beautiful. Um, yeah. Oh, no, that's not flan. <laughs> I've got flan on the brain now. Um, and this is obviously where they've got guests. Oh, that's somewhere else in Von Freer. That's a different albergue. But from Freer, Casa Lucas, delightful people, wonderful little place, beautiful home cooked food. Would definitely be in there next time. Okay, what's next? Um, Saria. Ah, uh, look, the I suppose the main area where pilgrims hang out in Saria uh, is this part of the old town, and this is uh, what is it, Rua do Costello? Um, Castle Street or something, or Rua Mayor, there we go. Uh, and this is the street that sort of climbs up uh, with lots of little bars and restaurants and albergues and things along along it. We've eaten in a few of these. The one that we really like is this one, Casa Manuel. And let's just have a quick look at Casa Manuel. Here it is. Got some pictures, just a little bar with tapas. But, oh, Really nice tapas, great food, simple, tasty, fresh, um, really, really nice. Um, the last time we went through Saria, it was closed. Pat was devastated. He said, I want to go and have some of their, uh, what was it? We had garlic prawns and um, pimientos and all that kind of stuff. Um, just, you know, oh, here's a menu. So, uh, you know, typical sort of bar food and everything, but really nice, really fresh, well cooked. Here's their menu again here. So, you know, they've got the, this looks, um, oh, they've got vegan food. There you go. So they've got a, a menu peregrino for 10 euros. Um, I'd be going in there. Really nice. I mean, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. There's lots and lots of places in Saria. Uh, we've tried three or four. This one we really liked. 
Where have we got next? Ah, this is... I cannot walk through Porta Marin without having a meal here. So we have left Saria. Um, this is this may well be your next port of call uh, in Porto Marin, which is basically above a flooded valley, which is now a reservoir. As you come into Porto Marin across the bridge, you got some steps. Uh, as you go up the hill into the town, swing left, and you will see Omirador. Uh, Omirador is a wonderful place to eat. Not cheap. I just. I think I just saw their prices. Let me just have a look. This is our mirador. Uh, you can get snacks out the front uh, of the restaurant. I'm not sure if they have accommodation. I don't think so. Um, oh, we've got a menu. Let's just have a look at the menu. Oh, here we go. That's a little bit hard to see on here, isn't it? Oh, they've got a pilgrim's menu. There we go. Is that the mirador? Uh, and there's the a la carte menu. So have a look there. You know, once you've watched the video, but the Mirador is a really nice place to eat for a couple of reasons. One, the food is terrific, and the view is sensational. So it overlooks the reservoir. This is basically the view from the restaurant. So you're sitting here, nice big picture windows. This is the outside of the place. Uh, I've never been upstairs. I'm not sure what's there. The restaurant's on this level out the back, uh, or you can sit out here and have snacks. Um, really, really nice place. So, oh, you know, if you want to spoil yourself, oh, have they got an albergue upstairs? Not sure if this is the same place. Possibly. Um, but there we go. Lots of really, really nice food in Mirador. Okay, where next? Um, oh, there's the menu. I knew I'd found one. It wasn't particularly cheap. Um, I was surprised when I when I found this and looked at it. I don't remember it being particularly expensive. Uh, I suppose for the quality of the food, maybe it's not that bad. But it's certainly not cheap. But nice. Where are we going to next? Um, okay, so we're now in the sort of final 100 kilometers um, of the Camino Francis. And it starts to get a little bit more sort of touristy and commercial. So from Surya onwards. Um, and, and to be honest, um, I struggled a bit to come up with some memorable meals from the from the last hundred kilometers. Lots of nice meals. I'm, I'm trying to just share with you some that were really memorable and places that I would definitely go back to. Melida. We have to mention Melida. Why do we have to mention Melida? Because it is supposedly the best place to get pulpo, octopus. And I think it's recognised in Melida that the best place to get the octopus is the pulparia esquiel, however you pronounce that. And we went there to have it. If you like pulpo, get it there. I can take it or leave it, I have to tell you. Um, apparently it's really good, uh, you know, traditionally cooked with the paprika. Um, this is certainly a very popular place. You see it getting cooked in the big pots, um, bigger pots than that, generally. Um, this is it with some pilgrims going inside here, I think. Um, so if you want to have really authentic uh, octopus in Galicia, that is the place to go, apparently, in Melida. I have to say I can take it or leave it. Um, and then where do we get to? Santiago. Um, like I said, I haven't had many sort of memorable meals on that last section. Um, and unfortunately, I would have to say the same in Santiago, but I would put that down to bad luck. Um, I just haven't found really the, the really nice places to eat. I've had some nice meals in Santiago, don't get me wrong. Um, but I've, I'm kind of researching a couple of places that would be really nice, but I haven't tried them yet. Um, I've had a very nice pilgrim's menu in, 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 oh, I wasn't ready to tell you about this one, so I'm not sure where it is. There, Martino Pinario. Uh, that's a converted monastery that provides accommodation, but they have a nice uh, restaurant as well where they do quite a nice pilgrim's menu. Um, I, th I think Santiago is so well catered for with restaurants. I mean, just look at all the symbols. Um, and it's quite a touristy town. 
you've really got to kind of find the places that the locals go to. Um, so I'm a bit hesitant to recommend anything because I haven't sort of found anything that I would necessarily want to recommend. But uh, the, I know there are a couple that people say are very good, so I might put the links down below. A place that I do enjoy, though, is the Cafe Casino. Um, and this is very popular with pilgrims. And it's right in the middle of Santiago, just down from the uh, cathedral on Rua de Biar. And uh, if you've been there, you'll certainly recognize it. Lovely setting, uh, meals, coffee and cakes, all that kind of thing. You can sit outside. Uh, it tends to be quite a, a popular meeting place for pilgrims um, and, and very nice food. So I would certainly go there again. Um, oh, missed out on that. Look at that. Seafood paella. Oh. Um, but, but other than that, I'd be a little bit hesitant to sort of recommend a place in Santiago. So there we go. That was a quick gallop along the Camino Francis. Well, it wasn't that quick. Apologies for that. Um, and let me just reiterate that you're not going to get bad food, really, anywhere along the Camino Francis. Uh, I've only ever had two bad meals. One was in um, a hostel where it was basically just some tin food warmed up and it was pretty awful. Um, the other, and I, and I won't say where it was, it was a, a restaurant that was recommended to me by a friend as being a very good one. It was the worst meal I've had in my life. Um, I, I found out later the chef was sick and um, apparently the owner had been cooking. So you, it, a little bit of give and take, I think, with recommending food. Sometimes they change ownership. Sometimes the, you know, the cooks change. Sometimes they're having a bad day. Uh, but I, I thought I would just share with you today some of the places where I think they're probably quite consistent because they tend to be out in the country a bit. They've been there for quite a while. Um, and I've been to those a few times. So it gives you a little bit of a cross section of some of the places. And we've sort we've seen during this video some little cafes with sensational food, some um you know, a little Casa Rol Rol, that one in um, Vega. Um, we've, you know, seen the other end with the with a Parador. We've seen that quirky place in Hostel de Obigo with the fantastic salads. So, you know, keep your eyes open. Uh, you, you don't have to pay a lot for good food. I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, you kind of just need to hunt it out. And there are some really, really nice meals to be had along the Camino Francis. And very often they can be the pilgrim's menus. More likely to be the menu del dia, because that tends to be a cut above, uh, or indeed in some of those little hostels or um, Casa Rorales. You don't have to pay the big bucks to get a really nice meal. So thanks for watching. Um, maybe you have some places to recommend. Maybe you've got some to recommend in Santiago. Uh, recommend to me. So do comment down below if you've had some really nice meals. Um, let's say on the Camino Francis, that's the one that we're talking about. Uh, and maybe mention that down below. And I should just mention, before we go, that a fantastic meal is not always about the food. Sometimes it's about the company. Um, and I know before anyone comments, we will probably hear from some viewers who say the most memorable meal we had was in an albergue where we cooked together. You know, So again, just another variation on having a fantastic meal, isn't it? So it's not always the food. Um, it's certainly not about what, how much you pay for it. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Bye for now.